Joining me now is Rashida Tlaib. She is one of the Just Democrats who won her primary, and I am proud to announce will win the general election. Hold. <laughs> okay, now that seems overly confident, people might think. But uh, Rashida, you're running against no one, is that correct? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, the my Republican uh, opponent uh, filled out his paperwork incorrectly, so I don't have a Republican challenger. Yeah. Okay, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, okay, so now this is a very safe Democratic seat anyway. The real contest in this situation was in the primary, which was a very close race and and a really interesting race. And and Rashida Tlaib did an amazing job in winning that primary, and it was one of the biggest and most important victories for progressives in the whole country. The general election will be a little bit easier, to say the least. But Rashida, what can people do? In, in your district to make a difference anyway? Um, I can tell you in Michigan, we're hoping to pick up three congressional seats, uh, three being currently held by uh, Republicans. All three are women, uh, incredible women, very progressive. Uh, some are um, in very, very much very close um, uh, in the pollings that I've seen, um, their competition from Slotkin, who's running against Representative Bishop. Uh, Congressman Bishop, as well as um, I know Tom Wahlberg has a great challenger in um, Gretchen um, uh, Driscoll, who is amazing. Um, she and I served in the legislature for years. She very much cares about the Great Lakes, environmental justice issues. And an open seat where Trot, uh, Congressman Trot just kind of left. Uh, it was a huge issue in his district being accessible to his residents. And so there we have Haley Stevens, who's running um, to f hopefully pick up the seat for the Democrats. So, uh, Rashida, you were the first Muslim woman ever elected to the Michigan State Legislature, and the second Muslim woman ever elected to any state legislature in America, which is amazing. Uh, so you're already representative to Um So uh, is it fair if I start calling you representative to uh, overall? Just call me Rashida. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody here in Detroit and in my district called me Rashida. I'm more of an activist, uh, community organizer. Uh, I think when people start giving each other titles and so forth, I, I, I don't want my residents feeling disconnected from me. So I want them to call me by my given name that my parents gave me uh, so that they can understand I work for them. And I, you know, I sometimes feel like when you start putting titles before people's names, somehow they feel like they have to treat you differently and they shouldn't. So I noticed that you already started setting up neighborhood service centers. Um, yeah. Now, a normal politician uh, would coast to victory and think, what do I need to set that up for? That's for politics, right? So that I could win elections. You're guaranteed to win. So why'd you bother doing it? Because I want people to have a little bit more hope about government. I mean, I don't want them. My residents to feel like they have to wait for me to pass Medicare for all to get access to hearing aids. Uh, that's one issue that we worked on this past week. And I mean, there's so many different kinds of challenges that my families are going through now, my residents are going through now, and they shouldn't have to wait until I get sworn in for me to be able to advocate on their behalf. I can tell you, I pick up the phone now, and if it's DTE or any other folks, I, I just recently called about a deportation uh, person in deportation that has special needs. Uh, a lot of the advocacy that I've been able to do, even as a candidate, has been really life changing for many of my residents, and I'll continue doing that. I think. Bills are important and policy are important, but sometimes it doesn't change people's lives immediately. But getting them access to resources and services that they can have now uh, can change their lives immediately. So uh, I remember when Barack Obama was president, he said that if uh, labor rights were ever questioned, especially um, um, negotiating uh, collective bargaining, uh, that he would put his walking boots on. Uh, unfortunately, he never found those uh, walking boots, um, but, but you did. Uh, and you were uh, recently not only at a rally uh, for labor rights in Detroit, but you got arrested. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I could tell you I've actually done worse in, in civil disobedience in Detroit and, and not got arrested. But I, I, I was taken aback by the fact that I was sitting there with 14, I believe it was about 14 other workers. Uh, we had put out a table 
in front of this McDonald's where the workers there wanted to organize, wanted to create a union. Uh, so the whole point was to put a table out on a main street uh, in Woodward Avenue in Detroit and say, hey, we're ready to negotiate a union. Uh, we want to have you know, job security. Uh, a mother next to me was talking about having her schedule uh, a lot you know, beforehand, not the day before, so she can take care of her children. Uh, a lot of them talked about just dignity and the workplace. Uh, one woman saying, I don't want my, you know, my butt grabbed anymore and not have to worry about going to the manager that's actually doing it to her. I, in so many ways, the quality of life of many of my residents and many of them are, you know, underemployed, are in the service industry. Many of them just want to live with human dignity. And I stood there, you know, sitting there at the table hoping that it would elevate their voices in some sort of way. And yeah, it, it resulted in the police coming and arresting us and saying it was, you know, disorderly conduct. Uh, but again, I got to tell you, I've, I've blocked the billionaire's trucks and never got arrested or even jumped trespassed over, you know, the Coke piles to get these samples to get, you know, the show that it I have no idea if it was because I was you know, there with other labor organizations, but it was still taken aback by the fact that they actually did arrest us this time. Yeah, I mean, but look, you didn't have to uh, risk any of that. You're going to Congress, uh, but but that's I think why you got elected in the first place because you do take those kind of risks for your constituents. Uh, speaking of which, I mean, in in that case, did they know that you were uh, the future congresswoman from that district, the the cops who arrested you, or did you get a sense they did not know? I think some did. I can tell you when I got arrested is a great story that nobody asked me about. But I, so they pulled me away with a woman named Jasmine. She's a worker, a janitor in the at the airport, and we got pulled up. We were handcuffed in the back of a, a police car, and there was two female police officers that were transporting us to wherever place. And I, I remember, you know, taking this moment, thinking I'm going to educate these police officers or why we were doing this. And I said, Do you know why we were out there? And the first question was, you know, they were like, no, why? And I said, because there's been a corporate assault on workers. Um, the fact that, you know, this is what's happening in the workplace. Their response was, why don't you just sue them? And I said, how is that going to take care of the systemic problem with what's happening with corporation greed and how it's really there? And right away, they turned up the heat on us in the back seat. And I look at Jasmine and I said, did they just put the heat on? Because they trying to shut me up, maybe. I was being <laughs> as polite as I can be. But it was very funny because then they put the brakes on because I looked at her and I said, I can't wait to tell the chief. Like, I can't believe they just did that. And then they kind of slammed the brakes and I my head kind of hit, hit up against the wall that's between, the barrier between me and the officers. And as we continued on, I, I, I knew, you know, obviously they had no idea who I was. I, I don't think they had any clue because they actually asked if I was from Detroit. Like, where are you from? And I said, Detroit. Uh, and then proceeded when I got there, the man that was booking me looks at my license and looks at the form and then looks up again. He goes, wait a minute. <laughs> you're, you're, and I said, yes. And he says, well, he puts the pen down and he says, well, congratulations. And then he proceeds to say, and he's a white male, proceeds to say, assalamu alaikum. Uh, <laughs> and his accent, and I said, alaikum assalam. But I think at that moment, those two officers were like, oh boy. And we didn't know who she was. But I, I like the fact they didn't know. I think it helps me experience what my residents would experience. It's, it's funny, a very, very similar story. When I got arrested in Democracy Spring uh, doing civil disobedience on money and politics, the guy uh, booking me was like, Jank, you go, wait a minute, you're that young Turk guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, my favorite part of your story was actually uh, a, a future congresswoman and a janitor getting arrested together. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what we fought for. Uh, yeah. That's what the Just and Democrats are about. That's what progressives are, are about. And Jasmine actually you know, said, you know, just meeting you makes me think I could run for office. And I said, absolutely. You don't have to change anything about you or your values or anything. And I think people like us don't run for office enough and don't think that we, we deserve to actually seek out these leadership roles or be on the inside fighting. From within. So, Rashida, one last thing. Uh, you're also helping your fellow Just Democrat, Ilhan Omar, uh, win her seat in Minnesota. Uh, and so, by the way, when we give the links here, and we'll, let's put up the links for, uh, uh, I keep wanting to call you Congresswoman, Rashida's website. <laughs> and so, when you look at the volunteering there, the volunteers are also going to help other Democrats, especially progressive Democrats in Michigan and elsewhere. So, uh, please keep volunteering uh, for this uh, race. Anyway, uh, but you're trying to help Ilhan Omar, but 
that makes no sense. You've got an easy path to become the first Muslim American uh, woman in Congress. And now you're gonna bring somebody else along with you. And now there's gonna be a whole conversation about who was first. No, I love it. I don't wanna be alone. Think about it. I love the fact that Deb Holland from New Mexico is gonna be the first Native American woman. I have these incredible women from one from Connecticut, the first African American woman, Johanna Hayes. And then I have Ayanna Presley. I mean, there's so many incredible women uh, that are coming to Congress. So I'm not alone. Uh, and these are women, we didn't run because we wanted to be first. We ran because we understand what it means to have college debt. We understand what it means to send our children to oversized classrooms. We understand when the government, it's like broken and disconnected. I mean, half of our colleagues in Congress that we're joining are millionaires. They're in an income bracket that is, you know, not like any of us. The, the majority of Americans will never ever be in that income bracket or even close to it. And so it's really important to have real people that understand real challenges that, you know, everyday Americans go through to be in Congress. So. God, I wish there were like six, seven more coming. I, I calculated it. I think we have about 12 for sure that I think are going to win their seats. I hope it's 20 or more. Uh, but to have this much of a wave of like just a rainbow of colors, but rainbow of women that are going through similar challenges that regular folk do, I think is going to change the lens that is now in Congress. So many of them don't even talk like us. They don't even communicate normally to us. Uh, so it's really great to try to put some humanity back into Congress. Yeah, Pramila Jayapal was uh, here in the studio a couple of days ago. And man, you've got some strong progressive women coming in all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And what, whether you call it a Just Democrat Caucus or any other caucus, it doesn't matter. The point is you guys are gonna stick together, fight together, and it's gonna be a, a thing to behold. And all progressives, no matter who they are, all throughout the country, can't wait. <laughs> and they're rooting for you. Yeah, neither can I. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rashida Tlaib. Thank you. Soon to be a U.S. Congresswoman Tlaib in about two weeks. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for watching this free clip of Rebel Headquarters. Don't forget to become a TYT member today for more exclusive content. Join now at tyt.com slash join.